welcome to Town Square. This is a great day for us because we're finishing this quilt. Well, have you ever noticed in town how boundaries and fences make us feel secure? Well, there's an old saying that goes, a high fence makes a good neighbor, and that's probably true. Well, I love this picture of my mom, safely perched upon this log rail fence. She was probably visiting my great aunt Edna on her farm. And safely securing our town is the split rail border. Now it's made from two inch wide strips and it goes quickly on the serger. But first I wanna show you how to sew the rows together into one top. Now you can see how each of the blocks are evenly spaced from the center out with full blocks on the ends, and then there's spacers added to these rows so that they can come out even. Well, I hope you've been keeping up with me because we'll be done today. I love the different sizes of people that walk down the street. Oh, there's long people, short people, narrow people, wide people. Well, the rows in this town square sampler are just the same. They're all different. We're gonna make them the same. Now, the shortest row is the four patch. And this measurement is what we're gonna use for all the rows. You can see Stars of Friendship is a little wider. And then the angels on high. Main Street has a spacer on the end. And Edna's pinwheel should be the same size as the four patch. Then there's a spacer on the maple leaf and a wide spacer on ducks and ducklings. Well, if Tabitha would just get her paw off my Stars of Friendship, we'll take this block and then we'll measure it against the four patch and cut them so that they're all equal lengths. Come on, Tabitha, wake up. Let's do this. Great to have this 72 inch long table so that I can lay each row out flat and measure it against the four patch. Now the four patch measures 64 and a half inches and each one of your rows should be cut to that measurement. Now I took the four patch, folded it in half and here is the center point right here. And then on the star, it's right here at this seam but you can go ahead and fold it in half and check on it. And you should put pins or marks on both sides of the row, just so you remember where the center is. And then line it up, we've got that lined up perfectly. Over here on this end, it's straight with the grid. So I'm just gonna go ahead, take my six by 24 inch ruler, line it up with the edge, make sure it's straight up at the opposite end. Let me see, ooh, it's right straight on that seam, looking good. So just trim off that extra on the spacer and then get rid of it. Well, the easiest way so that you don't get confused, gosh, I can get confused so easily these days. The best way is just to take the star row, put it back in the layout, pick up the angel row, bring it over, trim it off, and keep on doing that process until you have all of the rows trimmed. And then take the rows one by one, flip them right sides together, and match up that point, that center point where you put the pin in and pin several places along the edge. You wanna make sure that you're not gonna do any stretching. It should fit just perfectly. Pin out here and then go ahead and sew on the side that has the most seams in it so that you can um, keep those seams from twisting as you stitch them. Sew each row together till you have the whole top done. And then you're gonna add a two and a half inch border the whole way around the outside edge. Oh my gosh, what a lot of work. I better get busy. The townspeople came by and helped me finish this quilt, but Tabitha did not do a thing but we got it together and it's great. Now I want you to notice that I used the celebration banner and the peace trees on this quilt. And then my sister Patty actually has the flower garland and the applique trees. Oh, they're both beautiful. I wanna show you how to make the split rail border now. It comes from two inch strips. You need to have three different fabrics, two darks and a medium. And this is my first dark my second dark, and then if you layer two of the mediums, you can just cut a stack 
of the two mediums and get them all together. How about nine of each of the darks, 18 of the medium? I actually cut my strips in half. They're gonna go fast on the serger, but go ahead and set up your machine so that you can sew a quarter of an inch. Oh, you should sew a couple of stitches and then check it. And when you sew on the serger, you can just hold your hands in away from it and just actually let them roll right through your fingers. You're not gonna wanna trim any bit of that strip off, but get that one powered right through. Then take the second one, Flip it right sides together and just send it right through. You know, I really enjoyed that picture of my mom out by that split rail fence at my um, Aunt Edna's. Actually, I remember that fence and I remember right beside it was the outhouse. Oh, as we were kids, we couldn't wait to go out and use the outhouse. Actually, we just visited the outhouse because they had indoor plumbing then. But we always wondered what that catalog was doing out in that outhouse. Let me just pull these around and I'll show you. You want to take them to your iron, put the dark on top, set the seam, and then just open and press them so that the seam is behind the dark. But I'm on the ready. I already have some pressed. This is my first dark seam to behind it, second dark, medium, seam behind it and just go ahead and layer them. This is what's really fun. Layer them up and on the left end, square them off, get rid of that left end, measure them. Make sure they're three and a half inches wide. That's what's going to be important. So since they're three and a half inches in width, we're going to cut these into squares three and a half inches wide. Now for doing the whole split rail, you need to cut 96 of these pieces right now because you need a total of 48 blocks. Let's just go ahead and cut a couple more right along here. So I'll show you how to go on. Okay, now take these pieces and focus on the medium. The medium is what makes the pinwheel right here. Whoa, Al, better turn this one around. That wasn't a pinwheel at all. First arcs up here, second arcs down here, medium pinwheel right in the center. And stack them up so you have 48 pieces. You're ready to go. One more I'm gonna put right in here. Take the piece on the right, flip it onto the left, and just do some good old power sewing, assembly line sewing. Let me grab up the first two. Now, whenever you're doing the surgery, you don't need to lift your presser foot each time. You can just tip up the top of that. Let me get that lined up. And even though I use the serger, I do like to keep my stiletto handy too because it's great for separating blocks and just helping them feed right behind. Let me get this one. Remember too, you don't wanna cut any bit of your strip off. I'm just going right up to the knife. You don't wanna cut any strips whenever you're using your serger. Okay, let's just whip this around. I'll just do one block for you. Take these pieces, open them up, check, make sure they're right. And then when you flip them right sides together, right at this center seam, push the bottom one down and the back one up. Actually, I sewed that so tight together, I can't even split it. Well, let me do a little clip right there. Okay, the first one on the top down, underneath up, and they'll press so much better. Let me just push this one right through and see if I can finger match. Oh, and your tongue will help on this one too. Get it perfect. Okay. Let's see how the match is. Right in the middle, perfect. Okay, now take those blocks and make two equal stacks. One stack with the first dark on the top, take the remaining stack and turn it over so that the second dark is on the top. Set the seam with the first one, first dark, set the seam, open and press so that the seam is going towards the first dark. This one, Second dark on the top, set the seam, open and press so that the seam is going behind the second dark. So that when you take these pieces and you sew them into pairs, let me show you. This one, the seam is going up and the piece right beside it, 
the seam will be going down. And that way, they're going to lock right in the middle, and you can sew them perfectly into pairs. And then from pairs, just keep on going. You're going to sew 13 blocks for each side, 11 blocks for top and bottom. Now, we've been adding spacers on the ends of all of our rows. These blocks are exactly the same. Take a two and a half inch strip of the first arc and just add it on to the end of those of the uh, blocks all sewn together. And then before you even start adding anything, lay each of the four pieces against the quilt and cut them to match your quilt. Sounds good. Well, one more step and we are nearly there. And then on the end of the spacer, once it's cut to the size of the quilt, take a six and a half inch square, attach it on the end, and you can add two sides without that, and then the other side, look at this. This is top and bottom, has the spacer and the six and a half inch square. This is gonna fit perfectly. Let's take a peek here. I open this up, the first, the side borders are added, and then the top and the bottom, make up the very last steps. Now with these added, all I need to do is some machine quilting. My quilt shrunk, but I thought it would be a lot easier to show you how to quilt on this size. So let's get into it. First you start out with your backing. You take your backing and you put it right side down. And then on top of that comes your batting. Now you could use 100% cotton batting or an 80-20 like this one. It has a nice loft to it. And then your quilt top comes right side up and you smooth from the edges out. Just make sure everything's nice and smooth. Then you really need to take some clamps. And they look like this and they're perfect for just wrapping around a table of this size. So just clamp your quilt down, make sure you don't have any puckers in the back. It's really best if you work with somebody on the opposite side. It's always pulling, making sure the bottom is smooth. Now once you have it smoothed and clamped, then you wanna do some safety pins. And I use a pinning tool that looks like this. It has little ridges right along here and one inch safety pins. I lost my safety pin, so let me just take one out. Okay, this safety pin has a cover on it so that it's easier to grasp. You can hold on to it. And you just take your pinning tool, tip it down like this, take the pin and head towards that ridge. Come right up on the ridge and then just close the pin. And you can use this tool just cover your top with pins. Now, if you take your hands and drop it on your quilt and you feel pins, you have enough pins. Once you've gotten a safety pin, all right, clamps come out. Let's just pretend this is a really large one because we want to make it manageable. So you just take the edge and you roll it. And boy, it really does help if you have some assistance. But roll it in to a roll like this and then take some clamps that will wrap around this quilt roll. Oh, it's looking good. One more long here. Okay, now let's just take this over to the sewing machine. And I do have to confess, at this point, I would just rather send my top out to my cousin, Carol Ann, because she has a large professional quilting machine. And she will do something like this. Oh, she can do all of this wonder stippling and quilting all over the top. Well, even Julia Childs eats in restaurants, so I can send my top out. But Mary did this one, and she did quilt it on her uh, just regular sewing machine. I want to tell you about how she did it. Once she pinned it, then she went and did some stabilizing. You really need to go across each of the rows. She just used her walking foot went straight across the rows. And then down through here, she stabilized her rows. And as she got into the ground, just straight across. And then she outlined her whole quilt. She went around the border the whole way around. And once everything was stabilized, she went back and she did some stippling in around her stars and her angels. Now, if I show you from the backside, you'll really see what she did. 
Okay, here's just those straight rows along here, straight along the border, and then some stippling. So you can do it just in case you don't have a cousin called Carol Ann. But on the small ones, so easy to do. I already have my walking foot in place. And I'm going to lengthen my stitch to, let's see, to 3.5. That's a nice long stitch. And you might want to use invisible thread at this step, or you can just use regular thread to match your top on the top of your machine. And in the bobbin, then put a thread to match your backing. So now I'm just going to drop my foot so that the needle is right in the seam. And just use your needle down. When you're machine quilting, make your hands like a triangle. Hold them like this. And let's just keep it flat and open that seam. And you just stitch right along in that ditch. Just keep on moving and stitching straight through. And this is exactly how you would go across all of the rows and then around the outside edge. Well, I'm getting down towards the edge, so I think I'll just lock off and show you how to do the binding. Now the binding comes from three inch wide strips. You're going to take those three inch wide strips, piece them together into one big long strip, and then press them in half, wrong sides together, like this. And then just start in the middle of one side. How about I just start right up here? I'm going to pull that pin out of the way. That is something you have to watch out for. You don't want to put your pins right where you're going to be stitching. So let me cut this stitching here and take the edge of my binding and line it up just with the edge of the quilt. And I start about five or six inches in from the end, and I use the width of my walking foot as my guide. Okay, needle down. And as I stitch, I just hold the binding mm, just a little tight, not too tight. It's, there's just a fine line there. But I just put a little tension on the strip, and I'm heading right into that corner. And let's see, I want to put a pin so you can see where I'm going to stop. Right the same width from the corner. I want to put a pin the same width as my stitch right here. So I stop right there. And I'm going to see if I get a perfect miter. What do you think? OK, so at this point, I'm going to stop with my needle down, raise my presser foot, turn the whole quilt around to the second side, uh, drop my presser foot, and just reverse sew right off the end of the quilt. All right, and then you just free it and take this corner and fold it straight up on an angle. Let me see if I can get it on a 45. Straight it up on a 45, and then once it's straight up, very carefully take it and fold it straight back down. So the straight edge is lined up with the straight edge of the quilt. And then just pick up. You don't even need to go back in that same hole that you just stitched in. Let's just keep on going right around. And you would do every corner exactly like that one. Now, are we going to get a good miter or not? Let's take a peek. OK, let me grab my um, cutter and my ruler. And this time, you just want to cut right up to the edge. And oh, what you do not cut off that corner. This is the scary part right now. And let me just cut right in here. Just see how we do. Along here. And take these pieces and get rid of them. And now for the magic of the miter. I'm just going to take this corner and just flip it around here. And that should be a perfect corner right there. Oh, it looks good. Now from the back side, I do like to do my finishing by machine. So I just take this piece on the back. And I fold the binding so it covers that seam. And then just with safety pins, or, or with straight pins, rather, just take straight pins, pull that so that it covers the previous line of stitching. Just pin right along there. And the corner is just the opposite of what we did on the front. Tuck that in right there. And just fold that around right here. Like to put a pin right in there as well. That's the one that always gets stuck in the walking foot. You have to watch you pull it out. Just keep on pinning right around there. And then I like to put a bobbin thread in to match my binding. 
an invisible thread in the top or else just a, a matching thread and stitch in the ditch the whole way around just catching it on the back side. Or if you want, you can even hand stitch this. I won't even mind. You can fence me in with just one arrangement of those split rail blocks. If you make all 48 blocks for your quilt and you're not sure that the colors are right, you can go ahead and turn them into another quilt that looks just like this. It's so much fun. Now it's the exact same block, but it's set together in rows of six and eight rows of them. And you see a green block and then a brown block and they just keep on repeating. This is how you do it. You make your blocks just like I showed you. Make your rows exactly the same. But when you set them together, go ahead and alternate between the placement of your fabrics. When you're done with this one, I'm gonna have a blue pinwheel and a red pinwheel, so much fun. Now, I love this one. This one is a great masculine quilt. It's made of 54 pinwheels and 148 flying geese. Very masculine and fits a queen size bed. It's perfect. This one is actually a smaller, smaller scale, just like the other one but it's beautiful, set on point, with uh, solid squares throughout its side and corner triangles. Love that red framing border, and then that extra border on the outside. Let me show you how to do it. You need to make 24 blocks. All, all you need are 16 background strips, two inches wide, and 16 medium and dark. You know, if you take a medium or a dark and sew it with a background, you can actually get three blocks out of one strip set. We'll make 24 and lay them out on point, four across and six down. Well, hopefully those blocks are six and a half inches square, whatever size they are. Cut solid squares exactly the same size. You're gonna need to have 15 of them and just fill them in in all of those missing places. And then the side triangles come from a 10 inch square. You'll need to have four of them and cut those pieces into fourths on both diagonals. And let's see, they should fit perfectly around the outside. That's what I love, a quilt that fits perfectly. So just let's just place those around the outside and we'll just place one right up here. We need to have corners now and those are five and a half inches square cut only once. So we keep that bias on the inside edge. It's gonna be perfect, just two of those. And then if you want, you could go ahead and put a framing border around it. How about some flying geese? Now these flying geese are the same technique that I showed you on the trees on Main Street. Well, the whole quilt is just so much fun to do. Give it a spin and you'll find out. As I've been celebrating my hometown of Zillianople, Pennsylvania, I've enjoyed these nostalgic moments with you. Well, as you make your town square sampler, may it bring back your fond memories of family and friends. Mm -hmm.